what other stuff? I mean, this many boyfriends club, of course. I remember seeing it, watching that. That's recorded live in Ellensburg. I couldn't remember when I was listening to it. I goes, oh, wait, is that me playing? It wasn't me playing. It was Brett playing through my amp. And that horrible, <laughs> it's like between every song, the Screaming Trees, like early shows, you can hear like, that horrible whining <laughs> feedback, but that became the whole song. This many boyfriends walk her home. This many boyfriends ring the phone. Lori, Lori, what's the story? All those boys think you are boring. They just see those bobby socks. Now what's beneath those curly locks? I have a recollection of being in Calvin's apartment at the Martin, hearing the the song and considering what guitar part might go along with the lyrics. And it seemed to me that the rawness of the song would benefit from just some feedback as the guitar part. And so a cappella in a sense with piercing feedback. Was there a, ever a different guitar part as no. you were writing it, Calvin? No. No, but there was a different version, the version from Corvallis from that same show that asked me. That version is really good. And it was like one of these two for the record, but the Corvallis one ended up being on the, the Crashing Through single we put out last year. But uh, the Ellensburg version was on the album, mostly because it was recorded in Ellensburg. I mean, they're both really good versions. They're both different. They have different uh, emphasis, I think. But uh, we played at the Hal Holmes Center with uh, Screaming Trees and Girl Trouble earlier that year. And Steve recorded the show from the sound booth. And uh, that's what we ended up using. That song was part of a full set that was recorded in Ellensburg at the Hal Ohm Center. And it was a, a rec room tied to the library in Ellensburg, Washington, where anybody, I mean, anybody could put on a show. So if a 15-year-old kid wanted to put on a show with the Screaming Trees and Pete Happening, he'd go up to the clipboard and fill in the date and what they wanted to do. And the city would provide, uh, you know, some kind of security guard and you'd have a show. And then it was up to the to the kid to hire a PA system and a guy to run it or something like that. But uh, that's why we had so many amazing shows in Ellensburg, Washington, because there was no impediment. So we took some of our early digital equipment down to the Hal Home Center and set it up and uh, ended up with a Beat Happening set and a Screaming Trees set. And the Screaming Trees just sounded terrible just because it was the wrong way to record. You know, a big, loud, psychedelic band was, you know, a couple of microphones and a Grange Hall, basically. But Pete Happening, because they had less shit going on, their their stuff sounded really good. And Calvin, yeah, he's just being as obstinate and kind of in your face as he can. He's popping all his peas. The S sounds are all sputtering. So he's just, just making the microphone just hurt. <laughs> you know? It makes me mad when I see them make you sad. Sometimes I want to be real bad And shove those words back down their throat Lori, Lori, what's the story? Let's go do some apple coring We will bake an apple pie Maybe that will dry your eyes If we were playing with other bands who were more recognizable as rock and roll bands, then the ways that Beat Happening would go into kind of unusual territory off script for what the audience had expected, there might be audience reaction. And Calvin was, and Heather both were really good at, at I think, feeding off of that. So it could be that somebody was just spontaneously picking up on something from this strange song they were hearing on stage and becoming a part of it. It was a well-attended show. A lot of teenagers. I think Screaming Trees had a good local following at that point. So, 
a lot of local teens were there to see them. It was our big show in Ellensburg, and people were like, because we put out Clairvoyance, and I guess it was in the fall of 86, and people in town are like, who the heck are these people? Those would be even before we were on SST, but Ellensburg was kind of like, you know, a band with an album in Ellensburg. And, you know, we had like reviews in the college paper that were kind of like this. I don't know if this is very good, you know, kind of negative reviews. And a lot of people are like, those guys suck. But we had a lot of people came and see us. So, you know, probably slightly younger people in the crowd were probably like, you know, high school because it was an all ages place. The screaming and yelling audience in the front row is Lori Birdsong. So the idea that, first off, I don't think Beat Happening got that kind of screaming, yelling response in other cities. So I think it was, uh, Calvin was uh, being a proper showman, was, all right, the front row is going to go nuts. I'm going to play to the front row. Did he know who Lori Birdsong was at the time? I'm not sure. Lori would go on to marry Van Connor, and they would have kids, and me and Lori are still in touch. But uh, the, there are three or four screaming girls making it sound like a bad Beatles recording or something like that. And it's primarily because he's singing to Lori. We tip over apple carts with the pounding of our hearts. Lori, Lori, don't you worry. We'll have our own swimming party. We'll swim up and we'll swim back. Now you're sitting in my lap. And there's one thing I forgot. I love Lori a lot. I imagine when it was live, he dropped the mic and walked off stage. I'm not sure, but that was a common finale.